Okay, Board of Trustees of the City University of New York, Board Committee on Facilities Planning and Management, January 22nd, 2024. Happy New Year to everybody. I call the Committee on Facilities Planning and Management to order. We will start with the information item. Information item 1A is a presentation regarding the Spark Kips Bay project. We will now turn. We, we got to get, yeah, get so, this. Yeah. yeah they're, okay. They're pulling it up. Okay. Let's get started. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Ch uh, Chairman uh, Overfill. Uh, <coughs> Although you have already seen and will see a great deal of information on this project, in preparation for three resolutions that will be presented to the board today, the committee chair and I felt that some history would be helpful to the committee. On the screen, you see a concept of what this endeavor will ultimately look like. It will begin by providing, I will begin by providing some, some, uh, some brief background on current status and the frame, frame next steps uh, for this very important project. So how we get here. In 2012, CUNY and the city engaged in an agreement that there was a variety of other provisions. This agreement really could center around an exchange of Brookdale and 74th Street. Specifically, 74th Street property will be transferred to CUNY and Brookdale MFA will be transferred to the city. In 2015, the agreement was modified and the following terms were changed. 74th Street property transferred to CUNY and requirements to build by 2025. CUNY Memorial Sloan Kettering MSK to build a site foundation that costs about $27.7 million. CUNY transferred Brookdale site to the city. CUNY to remain at Brookdale until 2017. CUNY and the city were not able to complete the terms of this deal. And by 2022, Hunter College remained at Brookdale, 74 so still was undeveloped, and MSK filed an intent to sue the cost of the site foundation for 27.7 million uh, um, filed a, a lien against, against CUNY. In 2022, Sparks was, was initiated with the sign of a memorandum of understanding by CUNY with the city and the state in order to create a deal with satisfy all parties and achieve the best possible outcome for CUNY, this MOU provides the following terms. 74th Street is transferred back to the city. The city to pay MSK for the foundation, uh, which is $27.7 million, and MSK will withdraw its lawsuit. The city to contribute 50% funded to CUNY portion of Sparks. That brings us to where we are today. The CUNY Board is acting on the following project's next steps. Policy one, policy B1, Brookdale-Sparks Plenary Development Agreement. Policy B2, Transfer of 74th Street. Policy B3, Le Leasehold Condominium Agreement for decanting. On this next slide, the MOU gives you a general, this gives you a general framework describing the project's general components in the process for managing this development. The initial task laid out for the project was to develop a master plan which would broadly establish how the needs for all stakeholders will, will be met. Over the past year, New York City's Economic Development Corporation was supporter of CUNY and in conjunction with Skidmore, Owens, and Merrill developed a comprehensive campus site plan for Spark that supports its diverse uses. This plan incorporates detailed input from CUNY, both at the campus central office level to ensure their own needs were considered right from the concept stages of the project. The master plan, which was released to the public in November of last year, leverages the unique synergies between the field of healthcare, life science, public health, and education, all to create a modern environmentally sustainable network of buildings and public open space. 
This slide lays out the vibrant life science community which already exists at Kiss Bay. With multiple world-class medical centers and labs, Box will be an educational cornerstone for this area. Next slide, please. Aside from CUNY, the other Spark occupants will be DOE High School for Health and Professional Human Services, New York City Health and Hospital Corporation um, Ambulatory Care Simulation Training Center, a modern Mahan Forensic Pathology Center for the Office of Chief Medical Examiner, and EDC's Commercial Life Science Research Facility for private companies. At the present, we're in the preliminary stages of planning the site and space allocation. However, a broad stroke, the building you see this imagines, uh, imagine on the left side you have the life science lab, the health and hospital corporation. At the center, you have the, the home for OEM and uh, the science labs. And at the right, you have the home for CUNY and DOE. Spark will consist of over 2 million square feet of state-of-the-art facilities at Hunter College Brookdale campus. The breakdown will be the following. CUNY, 520,000 square feet. H&H Ambulatory Simulation Center, 164,000 square feet. DOE High School for STEM Center is 160,000 square feet. OCM, Forensic Pathology, 138,000 square feet. And EDC Commercial Life Science up to a million square feet. CUNY's project cost is $950 million. $465 million coming from the city and $465 million coming from the state. This will be New York City's largest cluster of life science activity. It will create a talent pipeline for New Yorkers to enter the life science and healthcare sector. Spark will further university goal to prepare next generation of college students for jobs in this growing sector. This will not, not only give CUNY students access to meaningful, high paying jobs, it will provide much needed personal, personnel for a variety of healthcare and life science jobs across the city. This is obviously a fantastic opportunity for CUNY. With this project, the university will be able to expand our programs in the healthcare and workforce development area, replace existing out of date facilities to new state of the art facilities for our faculty, staff, and students, use phys physical proximity to establish pipeline, connect the students to internships, jobs, and, and the critical life science industry. CUNY, as an anchor of Spark, will house Hunter College of Nursing and School of Health and Profession, the Graduate School of Public Health and Health Policy, BMCC healthcare programs, including space for dry labs, simulation labs, flexible classroom space, administrative space, and general support space, and CUNY's research labs. Now that I have walked you through very quickly to this very important project, let, let me tell you a little bit about sort of the, uh, the timeline. New York City's EDC is overseeing the environmental review process of this project. It was initiated in August of 2023. It's scheduled to be completed this year. This will follow by the completion of the EULA process, which is in 2025. EDC's initiated the design and architectural uh, is already taking place. They, they're in the process of onboarding um, uh, architectural firm later on this year. Hunter will relocate the program presently located at Brookdale campus in, in summer of 2025. This will follow by initial site assessment, letting, letting to demolition, and expecting the beginning of, of uh, construction in early 2026. <coughs> so um, this is all part of uh, sort of the, the timeline that uh, the, the chair felt it was important for, to lay out <coughs> for the members. Now the next slide. Later today, VC Atala will be submitting three resolutions to the board to approve three very important actions. The first is to authorize preliminary development agreement between CUNY and EDC relating to the design and construction of Science Park and Research Campus, Sparks, Kids Bay Project. The preliminary development agreement for CUNY new facilities outlines its component parts and describes CUNY's role in overseeing the development, including the inclusion and necessary agreement. 
The second is to authorize the disposition of, seven, of 524 East 74th Street to EDC. The disposition agreement for East 74th Street property returns to the property to New York City EDC and removes ownership restrictions on North Fall, which is currently the subject, subject of an RFP that we will be coming to this board to discuss on a future date. Also, it also should be noted that as part of this agreement, EDC has agreed to, uh, when they put out the RFP, to include in there that Hunter has a particular use of about a, a hundred thousand or so square feet. So, obviously, it's going to go out to the marketplace whenever they decide to develop. But I think it's a, <coughs> it's another message that we're trying to send that making sure that Hunter continues to remain whole is extremely important. The third is to authorize into a new leasehold condominium transaction for approximately. 54,100 square feet of rentable space at 63 Madison Avenue, New York, New York. The draft letter intends to, for a leasehold condo, enables the decanting of programs presently housed at Brookdale 64 Madison Avenue in conjunction with leasehold condominium, condominium for Baruch College, which will require swing space to accommodate renovation of 17 lecks. I'm excited uh, that we're taking these steps. I think it, it allows us to really move a very important project that is going to allow to, to be able to, for our students to take advantage of a, really a growing industry uh, and the life science. So at this point, I'm happy to answer any questions or I'll turn it back to the chair. Okay, I'm going to open the floor to any questions for Hector. No, no, please, uh, Chair. Um, I um, uh, reiterate the comments from uh, our uh, Vice Chancellor and Chair uh, facilities here. Uh, this is something that New York very much would and has been looking forward to. Uh, in particular, uh, no doubt, uh, Hunter College, who has been a uh, 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 major uh, programs for nurses, uh, as I have uh, been a nurse in the program at that very campus many, many years ago. I uh, won't say how many, uh, but this is uh, probably something that the rest of the country will be seen as very incredible, visionary, and appreciate the uh, chairman um, and, and, of course, the chancellor and the chancellor's work on this. And, of course, uh, vice chancellor, we know that the opportunities here for minority women and uh, veterans would be uh, front and center uh, for CUNY in having the opportunities of building here. So with that, I will. Thank you, Senator. my time back to the chair. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I didn't know that you no, wanted just, to speak. No, no, just um, um, not only an exciting project, but I do want to acknowledge, uh, as you can see, it's, a, it's an extremely complex uh, legal facilities, coordinate agencies, inter-campus uh, 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 project. And, and, and I'd be remiss if I didn't take the opportunity to thank um, uh, uh, the COO and Mohammed and Tal and the entire team there on, on facilities for uh, also staying and, and working with the agencies and keeping it, it going and making sure that our campus partners uh, who also uh, deserve, uh, you know, deserve credit, you know, Hunter and, and the School of Public Health and all the partners there. Uh, uh, thank you also to the general counsel and, and his team because this is this is uh, bundling and unbundling and and uh, but uh, I think that we have an incredible path forward that's a very 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 exciting and um, and like everything else that's good and beautiful and important and transformational it's complex so uh, I just want to add that to uh, to the record. Um, thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, I'll introduce myself. My name is Daniel Cronin. I'm currently a third year student in the Macaulay Honors Program at Hunter College. I'm our External Affairs Commissioner, our USS Delegate, 
and perhaps most importantly for this conversation, a former Brookdale resident. <laughs> I am not here to try to convince you uh, to do away with this plan. I'm sure you are well aware of what our dorms are. You know we house approximately 700 students there, many of them low income, international, and emergency house students. I'm sure you're aware that students are not necessarily happy with how the plan has been handled or communicated, and faculty as well. And I'm sure you are aware that they've been very outspoken about that. I'm not here to ask you to say no to this plan. Rather, I'm just asking for better communication, more transparency, and more accountability. Um, I think that's something that we have yet to see. Uh, the most communication I have, have as a student have received from about this plan has been the chancellor's email from about a year ago. Um, and you might say, well, that falls on Hunter, the campus partner, to communicate. And I have had many conversations with Hunter administrators about this issue. And the most common answer I've gotten to many of my questions has been, we don't know. And you might say, why don't you know? It's your property. They say they don't know because community, uh, CUNY has not been communicating with them. And I think it's just a shame because students don't know what's going on. Administration says they don't know what's going on. So it, someone needs to be held accountable. And I'm not asking for anything big. I'd just like to see greater communication. Most students don't know where they're living next year. They don't know if they can come to Hunter. Um, I have a friend who is a admissions uh, counselor. And many students, incoming students, have asked about our dorm situation. We don't have an answer for them. Many Macaulay students, I've interviewed them. They ask about our dorms. We don't have an answer for them. There's just a lack of answers, and we would really appreciate uh, greater communication, more transparency. And I think just to kind of sum, it, sum this up, a little funny story. Maybe it's not funny. Um, I was speaking with several administrators, and they all shared this story. They asked someone in CUNY Central why the dorms had not been considered before proposing this park plan. And the answer they received is that apparently nobody knew there were dorms there. I don't know how true this story is, but I think it kind of sums up what's going on. Nobody really, at least at Hunter, it feels we're in the dark, and we would just appreciate more communication from the board, from CUNY, from whatever parties. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You, you want me to answer some questions? This one? Sure. Sure. Uh, thank you, Daniel, for yeah. your for your uh, for your question. Let, let, let me let me sort of back up and mm -hmm. a little bit and, 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 and take a step back. Um, as I stated earlier in my in my uh, my communication, this project started in 2012, and at that time when the project was announced, it was never conceived that that dorms would be part. If the project was to move to 74th Street. That was never part of the, yeah. the original the original plan. Uh, I think it's safe to say that um, at Hunter, previous administrations have planned for that. For if that was to happen, for that to happen, we um, I have my colleague Mitch Gibson, uh, who works out of my office, uh, leads a task force of stakeholders, and we meet with those stakeholders every other month. Every other month. And it, those stakeholders are made up of, of members of the Hunter community. Mm -hmm. They were appointed by the, the past president and now the, and, and reaffirmed by the current president, where we go and we present everything that's going on. Let me take it a step further. We have, we have had meetings at Brookdale with the, the local community board, where uh, my colleague Ian Mitch Gibson attended, where we talked about this project. We've had a uh, communication that has come out of the Student Affairs Department connected to our students and making sure we're engaged in them. We have this, now this is the official position. Any student that has a dorm at Hunter will have a dorm, whether it, not, not necessarily at Brookdale, but they will have a dorm in Manhattan. We have made accommodations for that. Second, any student who was there when the project was approved, when the project was approved, they're still there, we will guarantee that student the same rate that they're there. So we've had communications, we've put out information. <coughs> Besides 
the very thorough email that the chancellor sent to the community. Um, we'll continue to engage. I will be coming in front of this, this committee uh, some, really in the next, probably in the, if not the next meeting, to talk about an overall dorm uh, plan that we have for the university. Uh, because we, we think that it is important as we continue to move the university for, forward, not only that we have a plan that al allows us to address future needs, but also looks at the whole notion of affordab affordability. So we're going to be sort of presenting that, right? I know for a fact that, and the last thing I would say, that Hunter community, the current president, and has taken on additional space at some of our dorms. So we have enough space to accommodate any student at Hunter uh, that needs a dorm uh, will, will be accommodated in Manhattan in current location. So this, I don't know how that, that's not getting to you, but the communication has been and it's been very, very thorough. Do you mind if I ask two clarifying questions? Sure, please. Um, this committee that you're talking about, are there students on it? Uh, my understanding, the committee was made up of, of, of faculty members because uh, I understand the project is an overall sort of project connected to the School of Nursing, so members of those sort of areas are in, the, in that. <coughs> Dorms were never part of that, the, the project. So in some ways, the communication was to make sure that the students will, were informed that we will accommodate them in, in other locations. But this, this committee that I would reference is a committee connected to the project and how it's going to evolve to make sure that we're building to the spec of that particular end sure. user. And then just a second question. You spoke about guaranteeing the same rates. That's something that has definitely not been communicated to anyone I know, anyone in student government, anyone at the dorm. Even, I mean, I've spoken with residents like elaborate because it's a first time hearing of it. Yeah, so students, again, let me be very clear. I yeah. actually know exactly who are the students who, who were there when the, when the agreement was signed by the chancellor. Yeah. In the state, in the mayor, and the governor, yeah, we know who those students are. Correct. Any students who came after there, mm -hmm. after that, we uh, we will accommodate in another facility. So we know yeah. who those students are, and those students have been communicated with, right? Those students that were there when 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 it, when it was when the agreement. I am happy to attend a meeting yeah. and have the discussion. I'm just curious because I am one of those students, and you were there when the when the original agreement was uh, signed. Are Are you talking about from last year? No, no, no. This For this is going back agreement. multiple years. 2017? No, no. This is 2022 when we did it. You were there 2022? 2022. Yes, I, I was a student there at 20. And you didn't get any information no. from us, so somehow that fell through the cracks, but yeah. we will guarantee that for sure. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions or concerns? And thank you for your question. Of Great course. question. Yeah. Really. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, we will now turn to the action items. Action item 2A is approval of the minutes of the December 11, 2023 meeting. I move the approval of action item 2A. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Carries unanimously. I would now like to address action item 2B, the policy calendar. Policy item 2B1 is a resolution to authorize a preliminary development agreement between the City University of New York and the New York City Economic Development Corporation relating to the design and construction of the Science Park and Research Campus Spark Kips Bay project. I now call on Vice Chancellor Mohammed Atalia to provide further background on this item. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As uh, EDC Batista uh, presented, uh, the preliminary development agreement will permit CUNY to progress the CUNY development by setting forth the plan to demolish the existing Brookdale campus, decant from Brookdale, design and construct a new CUNY building, and design and construct a Spark Plaza. EDC will construct the CUNY project in accordance with the master plan, subject to complying with the university's right to review and approve related design, construction, changes, schedule, budgets, and payments. Thank you. Thank you. 
I move the approval of policy item 2B1. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Carries unanimously. Policy item 2B2 is a resolution to authorize the disposition of the site at 524 East 74th Street to the New York City Economic Development Corporation. I now call on Vice Chancellor Mohammed Atalia to provide further background on this item. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as presented by uh, EVC Batista, while the broader planning and pre-development for Spark is ongoing, the transfer of the 74th Street site to EDC will remove ownership restrictions on North Hall and will also remove ownership restriction on, M on the MFA building. The ancillary agreements included as deliverables with the transfer of 74th Street site will resolve also the status of outstanding obligations with MSK, the city, and EDC. Thank you. Thank you. I move the approval of policy item 2B2. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mr. Chair, I'm going to recuse myself as I'm on the disposition city council. So this might come up in front of All right. Me. So we have one abstention. Okay. Great. Motion carries with one abstention. Thank uh, you. Mr. Chairman, can I just make one? Uh, sure. Um, we. This is just the beginning of other actions that we have to come in front of this committee. So I wanted to make sure that the committee was aware. Uh, this is, as the chance alluded, this is a very complicated project. So um, you haven't seen the last of us when it comes to this, <laughs> That's right. unfortunately. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that, for the record, you you know that we're we're coming this is back. The starting gun. We're just no, starting. I mean, it's an enormous project, and it's going to be a few years. Okay. Th thank you. Policy item 2B3 is a resolution to authorize entering into a new leasehold condominium transaction for approximately 54,100 square feet of rentable space at 63rd Madison Avenue, New York, New York. I now call on Vice Chancellor Mohammed Atalia to provide further background on this item. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Brookdale campus will decant approximately about 60, uh, 60 to 70,000 square feet of classrooms and office space uh, by August 2025 to allow for the redevelopment of the Spark Kips Bay. The proximity of the location at 63 Madison to the Brookdale campus uh, provides the ability uh, for students to also leverage the Baruch facilities. The economies of scale opportunity by negotiating the requirements in tandem with Baruch has led to the most economical decision for the Sparks project. This lease is for 32 years. The first five years is for decanting of Brookdale, and the remainder of the lease will be assumed by Baruch College. Baruch also has a planned renovation for Baruch 17 Lex Avenue, the field building for phases three and four, which will require a sp swing space to proceed. This additional square feet will provide necessary swing space during the renovation, and also during, the, during and after the completion of the field building renovation, the much needed expansion to accommodate current and future enrollment growth. Thank you. Thank you. I'm advised by the executive vice chancellor that there are some numbers that need to be corrected. So I'm going to move the approval of policy item B3 with amendments to the annual occupancy cost as follows. And I will jump in for yeah, you, please, Brian. Please okay, do. so. Uh, in the fourth warehouse, uh, item B, where it refers to annual occupancy costs, the years <coughs> should read uh, 16 through 20, and the per square uh, feet, the, the per square foot per annum number, rather than 8440, should read as 8450, with the extrapolated number as $4,571,450 which will then change the total number at the bottom to $138,198,450,000. And the other change will be in item A, I'm sorry, in item C under owner work. 
uh, the owner's cost will be an up to amount of $6,554,818.19. And the last change is in item G in this whereas. It should read $726,204.54 per year. Okay, now. So you can, so you're, you have moved it with these amended numbers. Okay, so you can now vote. Somebody has to okay. second it. Right, first, I'm, I need a need second. A second. Can I have a second, please? I second with the amendment changes. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Okay. All right. Any discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Now. I think that deserves Policy it. item B4 is a resolution to authorize a new leasehold condominium for transaction for approximately 69,456 square feet of rentable space at 63rd Madison Avenue, New York, New York, on, ha on behalf of Baruch College. I now call on Vice Chancellor Mohammed Atari to provide further background on this item. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, from 2019 to 2022, during the pandemic, Baruch College has experienced over 26% in applications growth, 11.8% in overall enrollment growth, and 13.8% in FTE growth. Also, according to CUNY Space Data, Baruch College has among the lowest allocable uh, amount of space per student within the CUNY system. So the Baruch College has about 56 net assignable square feet per FTE, while the CUNY wide range is 140 net assignable square, uh, uh, square feet per FTE. The new lease will add approximately about 69,000 square feet of space consisting of 63 uh, thousand square feet located on the Concourse A and 6,000 usable square feet located on part of the first floor for use as an exclusive separate entrance lobby. The new lease shall have a term of 32 uh, years. The university will allocate about $25 million of capital appropriation for the construction of the premises as well as an operating support of $1 million uh, per year during each year of the term. Uh, all amounts needed above and beyond will be the obligation of Baruch College together with the uh, Baruch Foundation. Thank you. Okay, I'm advised by, executive, by the Executive Vice Chancellor that there are some numbers that need to be corrected, so I'm going to move the approval of policy item B4 with amendments to the annual occupancy costs as follows. Okay, so again, the same uh, fourth whereas, uh, item B, annual occupancy costs, the concourse A, <coughs> Uh, rentable square footage number should read 63,346,000 square feet, and then we're going to go through each year, years one through five. The number should be 2,751,750.24. Years six through ten should be 2,949,389.76. Years 11 through 15 are 3,147,662.74. Years 16 uh, the next year should be changed to years 16 through 20, and that total number is 3 million or uh, 341,501 dollars and 50 cents. Year 21 through 25. It, the number should be uh, 3,543,575.24. Years 26 through the expiration, year 31, would be 3,741,214.76. So the new total number will read 101,116,685.96. And then there's an addition of the first floor of uh, usable square feet at 6,110,000 usable square feet. And for the years one through five at $95, uh, which is the uh, usable square foot per annum cost, extrapolated to $580,450. Years six through 10 at $102, uh, with the extrapolated amount at 623,220. Years 11 through 15 at $109, extrapolated to 665,990. Years 16 through 20, 
uh, at a rentable, at the usable square footage amount of 116 for an extrapolated amount of 708, 760. Years 21 through 25 at $123, extrapolated to 751, 530. Years 26 to the expiration at $130, we'll extrapolate to 794, $300 for a total amount for the six, for this first floor of $21,415,550. And the last change comes in part C of this whereas, with the owner work uh, at a cost up to $8,415,368.81. Okay, thank you, Gail. Do I have a second? I second with second. the changes. Any discussion? Yes, first question. Yes, please. 69,000 square feet is how many classrooms and how much administrative space? Just as a rough guess. Yeah, David? Uh, sure, we are uh, at this point only have a uh, rough outfitting from the architect, and the final plan is going to uh, go through the actual planning process. And so, uh, so, so basically, to answer your question, the concourse level, uh, we, are, we are looking at um, uh, somewhere around 15 to 20 uh, classrooms of uh, 40 or 45 or more students, and as well as a large classroom of 150 and above. And the ground floor will create a large classroom of 200 uh, seats. So, uh, so this will... Uh, roughly cover uh, the the type of swing space that we're going to need when 17 lakhs uh, are going to phase uh, three and four renovation. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay. Uh, all right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Any opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Policy item B5 is a resolution to authorize the renovation of the Bronx Express at Bronx Community College. I now call on Vice Chancellor Mohammed Atalia to provide further background on this item. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Bronx Express project will integrate uh, several functions at Bronx Community College, uh, including admissions, uh, registrar financial aid, and advisement services and will facilitate a high level of services for students as they advance from admissions through registration and enrollment each semester. Currently, these services are in inadequate and deteriorated spaces that are removed from each other. Uh, there is a 24,000 square feet of existing space available to combine these functions at grade level in Nestor Hall. This space was vacated when the new library opened in 2012 and is well suited to the proposed use. This project will bring the space of 24,000 square feet to a state of good repair. Uh, construction will be managed by DASNI and is anticipated to commence in February 24, uh, 2024 and be substantially completed by August 2025. The program management agreement uh, with DASNI requires DASNI to comply with and report on the applicable MWBE and SDVOP goals. Thank you. Thank you. I move the approval of policy item B5. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Just a point of information. Uh, yes. Express is the new nomenclature for one stop. Are we switching that out? For, I want to be proper in my usage. It's, it's, it's not one stop. No, no, no. Because one stop, you're thinking, you're, you're thinking single stop or one stop? But when they put the bursar or the register. One stop, on, yeah, that's yeah. yeah. It's the one stop. So. Yeah. Okay, so this is the new nomenclature that we're utilizing? Or? I think that that is the BCC That's just term that's, that's, that's the, the think, way I they express it. I think yeah. uh, Baruch has a different name for the, yeah, for the space, and okay. so <laughs> it's branded by the school to show. Yeah, no problem. Efficiencies. I just yes. wanted to get it straight. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. No. All good? Anyone else? Okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Policy item B6 is the resolution to replace the underground storage tanks at Brooklyn College 2900 Bedford Avenue. I now call on Vice Chancellor Mohammed Attar to provide further background on this item. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the underground storage tanks at the west end of the Brooklyn College campus north of the heating plant are approximately 42 years old and require replacement. Due to an oil spill in 1981 adjacent to the heating plant, soil monitoring remains as an ongoing process. Replacement of the tanks will diminish the risk of potential future oil spill. This project will bring four of the 35,000 gallon underground storage tanks into a state of good repair. Construction is managed by DASNY and is anticipated to commence in February 2024 and be substantially completed by September 2025. The program management agreement requires DASNY to comply with and report on the applicable MWBE and SDVUP goals. Thank you. Thank you. I move the approval of policy item B6. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Po policy item B7 is a resolution to authorize design and construction for the fire alarm system at Borough of Manhattan Community College. I now call on Vice Chancellor Mohammed Atalia to provide further background on this item. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the existing fire alarm system at the Borough of Manhattan Community College is over 40 years old and can no longer have fire safety devices added to it or to be replaced since they are no longer in production. Replacing the existing system is the best way to address its shortcoming and allow it to uh, meet current uh, fire department of New York and the Department of Building Code requirements. This project will bring the fire alarm system at Borough of Manhattan Community College into a state of good repair. Construction is anticipated to commence on uh, April 2024 and be substantially completed by July 2026 since it needs to move in phases. Uh, this procurement is through the Office of General Services and its requirements contract requires the contractor to report on and comply with MWB utilization of at least 30% of higher or higher. Thank you. I move the approval of policy item B7. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. With no more items on the agenda, I move to adjourn this meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Yes.